Well, hello there. You must have just purchased or are thinking about purchasing your first ready-to-fly first-person view drone. This is a very special time in a new pilot's life and you must be quite excited. But wait, before you just go and try and rip the skies, there's some things that you should know to have a good drone experience. And don't worry, we're here to help. Hey guys, welcome to Rotorat. I'm Ladrid. And I'm Vortex. Getting into drones is difficult. Usually you have to build them yourselves, learn how to solder, pid tune. You're watching endless YouTube videos just to find that one little question you have. Bardwell's got like literally thousands of videos and you don't know where to start. So at Rotorat, we're trying to make this easier by offering ready to fly. Yeah. So you can just pull them out of the box and fly. And we've got the HD-1, we've got the Cinewhoop, we've got the Skyliner. So a couple different options and more are coming. So when we say it's a ready to fly package, it's genuinely totally ready to fly. You put the props on it, you hit the arm switch, you're going. Mm -hmm. But we want to make sure you guys have the best experience possible, you're not making mistakes. So we want to go through the basics of what you do need to do to get it up in the air. Yeah, we've made it as simple as possible, but you still might have questions. Or maybe you bought a ready to fly drone from someone else and it's not as ready and you want to check some things along the way. So whether you got a pre-built drone from us or another source, we want to walk you through the things that you should check, how to be safe about it, and how to make sure you have a good experience and actually get it in the air. This is what you're going to get if you order the full build with the radio and the drone. Quick start guide, this is going to tell you where all your switches are going to do and just give you some general tips. It's going to come with props. You're going to get your drone, goggles, your radio. Don't worry that this stuff's already been opened up. It's for a reason. It's because the first thing we do is charge these radios because they take a few hours to charge and when they ship them, they're like almost totally dead and it takes like five or six hours to charge. So we charge that up for you because the worst thing that could happen is you get your ready to fly quad, you're so ready and you go, oh, my radio's dead and I have to wait half a day. And when you need to recharge it, it's just a USB-C cable. It does take a while to charge, but the charge lasts for a long time. I think. It, Charge mine maybe once every three or four weeks. You got your gaggles. You're gonna have to put your head strap on this that's gonna be located in here, which is also gonna have your power cable. The goggles do not have a built-in battery. You're gonna use, I think, anything from a two to a four cell to charge those. And what I typically do is I just use the same batteries that I'm gonna use for my drone. Although I'm not usually a fan of having the cable hanging down, it's worth it to not worry about extra batteries and. Make it last a good long time. We'll put the strap on. I, I know it kind of looks like a jock strap. It's not. This is actually the head strap. To tell the way that it's supposed to go, there's actually a little DJI logo on there. So you want that facing up. And that part is gonna be the strap that goes over the top of your head. You throw that in that middle one. Put these on the sides. If you've ever flown any kind of DJI radio before, you'll probably already know the little sequence to turn it on. If not, I'm about to show you. So it's a short tap and then a hold. That's how you turn it on. If you just push the button, it's not going to come on. Short tap, then a hold. Lights kind of sequentially go on and then you're on. It's going to beep like this, letting you know that you haven't dropped the throttle. It's like a little safety feature. So if you just bring that down, beeping will stop. You can stop annoying people. You're going to need your separate battery to turn on the goggles. Plug this guy in like a so. These plug in right over here. We got goggles. Also, in your excitement, don't forget, put your antennas on the goggles because you can fly without them, it'll work, but you're just not gonna get the range you're supposed to get. It's not gonna hurt anything if you happen to forget to put your antennas on. That's always on the transmitting side. Anything on the drone side, you always have to have your antennas on. So these just thread right in, nice and simple. There's gonna be four of them. Now you can plug in your drone. Now what we should see is this red light here should go to green once it picks up the signal, boom. So we're bound. That's telling you that you have connection. So you can check that by flicking some switches. There's your beeper switch. We're gonna go into that more in a second. I can check the goggles to see that I have video. 
I do have video and it's already been set up on channel one. So when you buy it from us, everything's gonna be set up, ready to go. You can literally just flick the switch and it's going. But let's say you built your own or you got something from somewhere else, or for some reason it's just, it's not bound. It's really easy to bind. So all you're gonna do, there's a little button on the side of the air unit right here, just over from where the LED is. All you do is push it in and you don't wanna push it too hard. I have had a customer break that button off by mashing on it too hard. It doesn't take much pressure at all, you just push it. The LED is gonna change colors. Now you come over to the goggles and there's another matching button that looks just like it right here on the goggles. Push that, you're gonna listen for the beep. Boom, now that's set up. Now to get the controller bound, you're gonna go back to the drone, hit the button again, same as before. Now there's an interesting little sequence of buttons here. Three buttons you're gonna press at the same time to get this into bind mode. The first one is this record button right here, which is also used to stop and start your recording. You're gonna use this front button on the right, and then the scroll wheel up here actually can also be pressed in. So you're gonna press that, that, and that at the same time. Let that beep, boom. So you got your drone, everything is bound up. What do you do next? You plug it in your computer and you flash it, right? No, don't do that. That's I probably know. been the biggest thing that yeah. we've gotten from support, right? When people yeah, call Yeah, usually us with if problems. someone has an issue and they're like, well, I flashed it and now this or that, you don't need to flash it. We've already done a lot of testing and figured out what's the optimal firmware to have it on, what's the best tune. At first I was very confused as to why people were doing this, but it actually makes a little bit of sense because a lot of other things that you buy, like video game consoles, computers, your iPhone, whatever. Yeah, it's kind of common. Time, the first time you plug it in, it's like, oh, you need to update your firmware, yeah. you need to update the software, you need to update this, update that, you have to update your couch before you can sit <laughs> on it. Everything is updated now. And the same is true with drones. There probably is new software firmware out there. The real problem is with the drones, when you upgrade the firmware, it wipes all of your settings. So right. unlike upgrading your smart TV, the drone gets completely right. wiped. So what we send you is totally flyable. In fact, sometimes we will even send the drones with an older version of the firmware because there might be bugs on newer yeah. releases. So this is your first drone experience and the first thing you do is plug it into a USB, flash it. You've now gone and erased all the settings and you're gonna have to start from scratch. If you do end up with this issue, check out our build videos. In our build videos, we walk you not only through assembling the entire drone, but also the configuration. So you should be able to follow step by step how to reconfigure your drone. And if you really can't figure it out, as always, you can send an email to support at rotoriot.com. We'll get you taken care of. Yeah. So once you're bound up, you can test out where your switches do. We have them all listed here for you. So all the switches on the radio are indicated by letters. So you have SA, SB, SC, SD. We got them listed right here and it tells you what each one's assigned to. The default position for all your switches is up and away from you. So you always want to start with the front two up and then these away. Every switch is just going to be the opposite of that. So to arm it, it's SA, you're going to pull it towards you. And then flick it away to disarm. That's the way I like to think of it is it's going bad, it's going bad, get it away from me. Just push it away and disarm. The only other switch that you're gonna actually see what it's doing while it's on the bench is gonna be switch SD, that's your beeper. So pull that one towards you. Again, this is how you're gonna find it when you crash in the field and you're just lost, you don't know where you're at. While I mentioned that, it's also a good idea, make sure to strap this connection down well. So you want your battery straps to hold that because the difference between finding your drone when it's plugged in and not plugged in it's huge. When you can do this, piece of cake. Listen for the beep, go find it. If you don't got that, it's tricky. The beeper's only going to work if the battery's plugged in. You got beep, that comes unplugged. When you got all your stuff on the bench like this and you wanna test out your switches and everything, you can't have the props on. That's, that's rule number one. In general, these things aren't too dangerous if you're pretty careful, but if it hits you and it's going full throttle, it'll slice you up. So always, always, always take the props off when you have things anywhere other than you're about to fly it. Okay, so we can check the arming switch. This is a, the number one question and concern that I get. I get calls all the time about this. People say, well, I was, I armed it, and then when I gave it some throttle, it's, it's acting like it wants to just take off on me. On the bench, that's completely normal for that to do that. It's, it's just because of the way that the gyro is meant to work, is it's supposed to be suspended in the air. When it's sitting on the ground, it's just building up this error. So long story short, 
don't be concerned about that. That's it's not going to run away in the sky when you put props on it. If for whatever reason something crazy does happen and you're just gaining altitude and you're not giving it any throttle, just disarm, just let it fall. It's always better once you've gotten past the point that you don't have control anymore to just let it fall out of the sky than to try to bring it back because sometimes it's just gonna end up getting further away from you and you shouldn't be flying anywhere where if it were to fall at any given time, it's gonna be a problem anyways. Another thing you can test out on the bench is how turtle mode works. So turtle mode is gonna be on your SC switch. You flick that down and when you arm it, nothing's gonna happen. But if I were to give it some roll, you're gonna notice only two motors are spinning and they spin the opposite way. So you're gonna get flipped over, you're gonna disarm. Now don't forget to get back out of turtle mode. I've done this before where I crash and then I go to arm and I'm like, I, I can't go anywhere. It's because you're still in turtle mode. So now you gotta flick out of turtle mode. Now you're back to normal operation. So there's one more switch, but there's not really any way for me to show you what it does on the bench and that's SB. So that switch is gonna put you into auto level. What auto level is for is it's gonna make the drum perform more like a phantom where when you push the stick, it'll move forward, but as soon as you let off, it's gonna level back off for you. It's not gonna be as stable because there's no GPS, but it can really help for when you're not used to the sticks yet to just be able to let off and it's gonna flatten out for you. But we don't really recommend to stay there too long because in the end, you're gonna be able to fly a lot better when you have full control over the drone. There's only one last thing to do before we take this thing for a test flight. You gotta put your props on. So. Hopefully, along with your purchase, you have bought a prop tool or you have a tool. It's just an eight millimeter nut driver. You might have something in the garage. If not, just pick one up from the store. You wanna make sure these are nice and snug though. If they come loose on you, it's gonna get bad. How do you know which way they go? Well, the first thing to make sure is that you have it right side up. I've seen people put their props on upside down, so don't be ashamed if you did it because it happens. Just about every prop that I've ever seen, it has what model of prop it is molded right onto it. And that's always gonna be on the top side. The other way you can kind of tell is pretty much every prop, every blade of every prop, it's got a little bit of curve to it. So you always want it curving this way, not this way. The leading edge of the blade is always gonna be the higher one. So if you're ever a kid and you're driving, you stuck your hand out the window, you kind of notice when you put the front of it up, it makes your hand wanna go up. Same concept with this. So leading edge is higher and also there's almost always a swoop to the edge of the blade. Swoop going that way. That means the props going this way. Every set of props, provided they didn't screw up and give you the wrong ones, you're gonna have two pairs. There's gonna be two that are the same and then two that are the opposite way. The ones that are the same go on opposite corners. So the, the way that most drones are set up is for the props to spin inward where the front two props spin toward the camera, the back two props spin towards the antennas. You can think of the drone as giving you a hug with them <laughs> yeah. props. But some specific builds we've found there's an advantage to having it go the other way. So in, in our Cinewa build, Cinewa build is, a, is a props out build. So it's they, swimming. Yeah, just it's keep like swimming. swimming. <laughs> just keep swimming. The front motors go in towards the camera. The back motors go in towards the butt. So if I look at this prop, I know that it's swooping this way. This is meant to spin that way. So that's gonna go over here. Leading edge of the blade is higher and the profile of the blade sweeps back. So I take the one that's a pair of that. It's the same, goes opposite corner. And now the thinking's done. You only got two props left and you only got two motors left. You can't get wrong. And then you wanna snug those babies down. Don't be shy about getting these nice and tight. I've also had some customers have issues. They're like, my quad sounds weird. It doesn't have any power. And what it is, is if you don't tighten these down enough, when you punch the throttle hard, it can actually slip underneath of that nut and spin freely. And you don't want that. Just nice and snug. You, you shouldn't be able to hold the motor and turn the prop at all. It should be in there nice. And when you're tightening these up, you wanna find a good grip to where you can kind of hold the motor. So what I do is I usually take a blade and I hold right over that. And then I know that as I'm turning it, it's gonna wanna turn. So I'm kind of gripping onto the blade and the motor at the same time. Just go to, you know, hand tight and then give it one little, mm, and that should do it. Props are on. It's time to do our first little test hover. Drone's plugged in, got the radio there. What you need to understand is as soon as you touch that switch, you're live. I've seen this happen to people where either A, they go to pick everything up and they bump it, or 
you've already landed and you go to pick it up off the ground and you bump it, you need to treat this kind of like a loaded weapon. It's ready to go at any time. So just remember, I'll press the opposite way of to like keep it disarmed. I'll like keep pressure on that switch as I'm walking around. You want to really make sure you don't hit that switch. We definitely recommend doing this test hover line of sight. That means you're not actually in the goggles yet. I know, you want to get flying FPV. <laughs> you're excited. Don't go full throttle yet. In fact, don't go any throttle yet. Right. What the I first like thing, to do, make sure your uh, directions are going the right way, right? And they should because we've set it up, but maybe you got it from somewhere else, and maybe you just, you should just be careful. It's just good practice, and it's also a safe way to test that you put the props on right. That too. Yeah. On the right stick, you're gonna gently push forward, and even without raising throttle, that should lift the tail of the drone up. And then you're gonna let go of the let stick back, back to center, and it'll come back to the ground, and then you can do that for every direction. <laughs> if you're really new, just do like little bunny hops. And this is also gonna help you practice landing. Just take off, try to move forward a couple feet, and land it. Take off, go to the side, land it. So when you're hovering, I'm only ever moving the stick about that much. There's not gonna be a lot going on in a hover. The only time you really ever need to pull the stick that much is if you're gonna do a full flipper roll. So what a lot of times beginners will do is they'll overcorrect and then they'll kind of get nervous and overcorrect again and you just get this like, whoa. That, that's what'll happen if you give it too much. So it's really subtle movements. Like if you can see my thumbs, I'm just barely moving it. Even though it may seem like a hover is a super simple thing to do, it's actually not easy to hover a quad right in one spot. So if you can't do it, that's, that's normal. Almost nobody can keep it planted as well as a DJI drone will do. But it's a really good practice because if you can keep it in relatively small space, that's going to teach you really good stick control for when you're out flying FPV, you're not just getting all over the place. It gives you a feeling for how much stick movement translates to how much drone movement. So, you got your drone. You didn't erase it. <laughs> you got it binded. You put the props on the correct way. You verified this with a test hover. You are on a channel. You got video. You're so ready to fly. I think it's time to get out and fly. I think it's time, I to, think go it's fly. time to go fly. Right up and down your neighborhood. No! <laughs> right. No. You gotta think about where you're flying, guys. You gotta fly in a safe location. We recommend parks with big caveats, okay? Parks seem like a great place to fly, but they can be a horrible place to fly because people go to parks for other reasons than flying. Yeah. And kind of as a rule of thumb, if there's anyone else there, you probably shouldn't fly there. You yeah. want to find yourself a nice empty field, especially when you're starting out, or when you want to start flying around obstacles like trees or, or things like that, that area needs to be empty. There, there should be no one there that's not part of the activity, yeah. that's not also flying, that's spotting for you or something like that. Yeah, someone will pop up out of nowhere walking their dog in a heartbeat, and you're like, oh, oh person, okay, where did you come from? So it's, it's really beneficial if you're kind of familiar with the area, of like you, you know a park, you know that people play soccer over there, so you're gonna be over here, and mm -hmm. you really wanna be away from people, especially if you're new, but always. Like, when we see a bunch of people, we're like, we're nope. out of here. We don't fly we around cars, go. we don't fly around people. People get into this because they see some of the videos that we do where we get to do really awesome stuff like chase cars and fly around people. Yeah. And those are all controlled environments right. where we're working with those, they're part of the operation. And we want you to get there, but when you start not, you shouldn't be flying around vehicles, you shouldn't be flying around people. You wanna have a nice remote open area and then work your way up to safe obstacles to fly around like trees mm -hmm. still in a remote area. You know, maybe empty parking lots eventually, flying around lampposts yeah. and you know, as long as it's empty, all you're risking then is crashing a drone into the concrete. And these things are pretty tough, but they will break from time to time. Because that's how you have fun. That's how you learn is crash. So I guess that's the last piece of advice I have is have fun and don't be afraid to crash. Push yourself, push your limits, n learn new things. That's what's so great about this hobby. There's so much to learn from building and setting up the drone, from actually flying the drone. It's very involved, it's very challenging, but so, so rewarding. And we hope that by offering some of these uh, ready to fly and build kit solutions, we can make it easier for you to get into it. Please check out rotoriot.com if you're thinking about getting into drones and you want to get a uh, get a ready to fly drone. If you already have a ready to fly drone and you haven't been able to figure out how to get it in the air, 
Hopefully this video helped. And if after this video, you still have questions, please reach out to us at support at rotoriot.com. Whether you bought your drone from us or not, we wanna get you in the air. So we will help you guys figure out whatever it is that's holding you back from flying and enjoying the best hobby that's ever existed. The best. I'm Ladrid. I'm Vortex. We'll see you next time. Have fun, stay safe.